events that are outside of our control, particularly the COVID pandemic, the riots, uh, the floods. These are all um, events that have taken place in our country that have undermined the progress that we would like to have seen by now. Certainly the support from business is still there. We're working very closely with business on the energy side of things. The turnaround you've seen at ESCOM is partly due to the skills that have been brought from the private sector, including the hard work that has been um, done by the men and women of, 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 of ESCOM. In logistics, we're collaborating and working very closely uh, with business. And so we will understand where there's criticism with the speed of progress, but we've seen a great deal of progress. If you go through our Operation Volindela report, for example, you will see that we've made some headway on a number of areas. And we strongly believe that now, with this new administration, you'll start seeing real tangible uh, fruits and results out of all of that work that was done in the sixth administration. The sixth administration, what is important about it, it was a rebuilding administration. Mm. A lot that the president inherited needed to be rebuilt. Uh, what do you mean the president inherited?
problem is getting fixed. reduction of criminal activity around uh, uh, ASCOM and so we have a great deal to be optimistic about because all of that work will now begin to bear tangible fruits. It has to. It has to. It we, has we certainly to. hope it does, right? Because um, South Africans have waited, actually, and have given the opportunity before. And I mentioned this uh, the last time as well, that it feels like there were several corners where we could have turned, and we didn't. So hopefully that certainly uh, does happen this time around. But Vincent Maguire, thank you very much. And uh, we were, no, 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 he will continue. <laughs> okay. uh, he, a few minutes, a few minutes is all he'll be unemployed for as a sign of from this paper to that one so we'll speak to you again later we'll hopefully speak again thank you so much thank guys. you so much always a pleasure work. cheers awesome. Vincent so, right. it seems like you know something we don't Sakina but we'll we'll take it <laughs> 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 all right so we still have an amazing vantage point of the uh, situation as it unfolds here at the amphitheater of the union buildings a number of dignitaries have arrived there I say Rilo Dinga we spotted former Prime Minister of Kenya and several others as well and Balente Mteto as part of our team watching things from uh, her own vantage point Balente Tell us who you have and what you're seeing with just, what, 10 minutes before the formal program begins. Well, Ayanda, what is happening right now with just 10 minutes left before the official program begins is that we're seeing people flowing in. It's really just people just flooding the, the precinct right now. And what you will see, I'm going to step out of the shot, is that the police have started trying to direct the people uh, walking in your...
But this is the situation here outside. It's back to you in studio. All right, Mbalente Mteta, thanks very much indeed. The situation as it stands outside of the Union Building. Still a lot of people, of course, hoping to catch a glimpse of this historic moment as we wait with just a few more minutes before the official program finally gets underway. And as expected in the lead up to that, a number of dignitaries are starting to arrive down the red carpet. We're able to spot them just over our shoulders where we seated uh, to get you a sense of who has arrived and um, of course, uh, possibly what this might mean for uh, their relations and how they see South Africa. Vincent Maguenga telling us, I think the figure was what, 18 heads of state? Uh, 18, uh, they call them, what did he say, heads of state and um, yeah, there was government, a, a, a there government was a officials, yes, yes. yes. So 20 in all, I think um, that would include perhaps two prime ministers or so. Uh, but of course, there are ministers here as well um, who've been, um, who are here to represent their governments uh, from some of the countries. I think Brazil, right. um, they sent uh, one of their ministers as well. But a lot of countries represented here. And as I was saying, it's no mean feat getting that many heads of state and government here, that's what he said, heads of state and government. There you go. And um, so 20 of them here within a short space of time. So the logistics that go into that is crazy uh, when the heads of state arrive. So uh, well done to all concerned. Without a doubt, speaking about the logistics, it feels like it's been a relatively smooth operation, you know, to get here and to get in and around. I mean, there's been a lot of communication, for example, around road closures in and around the union buildings. That seems to have uh, flowed relatively well. Of course, there is a heavy security contingency whilst we're also here. And what you're also seeing there on your screen, it seems as part of the exhibitions that are ongoing, is some artistry that's yes. also unfolding there. I can't wait to see what the final image may look like. My guesses are it's probably the president-elect from the eye that we can see yeah. there. Um, but, uh, you know, only time will tell, so to speak, when it, we get a sense of um, who ultimately is sculpted there and who where exactly. Who else would be sculpted today? I, I don't know. I mean, who, do you dare? No. <laughs> I mean, anybody else? <laughs> you, you can't be raining on his parade. <laughs> it is the day of the president-elect and, and I think that's what uh, we will be seeing. So, of course, I'm sure by the time we get to the ceremony that will be complete but yeah you're right that does look like Cyril Ramaphosa's eye yeah and it looks like it <laughs> <laughs> and I hopefully that's had a whole lot more sleep than he has over the past couple of months given just how much negotiating has had to take place in order for at least a president to be elected so far uh, and so much detail has emerged by the way about what took place in just the dying moments of that election in the National Assembly, Ms. Sakina, you were there. It's, you know, a, a sitting that went well into the night, in fact, into the early hours of the morning because there was just so much at stake and so much or such a lack of clarity before we finally knew who was likely to be inaugurated today. Indeed. And of course, um
and you would know in October those jacarandas when they are in full bloom that is quite a sight here in uh, the capital city and uh, they obviously they 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 not an indigenous species the jacarandas no, actually, by the not. way yeah yeah which is very interesting right because we've come on to really embrace them as a South African thing when quite frankly not to be the case but um, that aside I think the optics of just having them blossom the way they do especially um, around October as you mentioned is absolutely stunning but of course we're here for more than the jacarandas today because as we continue with our special broadcast of the inauguration um, we are keeping a close eye on a number of moving parts in and around that the official program is meant to kick off at 11 o'clock it's a minute after 11 hopefully it'll start quite soon but uh, the SAPC doing a great job as always if I say so myself of keeping you abreast of where the things that you should be watching are unfolding so for Mugwena part of our team here in Pretoria also watching developments and uh, we've seen a number of international guests Sophie arrive today and in fact we're expecting more throughout the course of the morning. Well, Ayanda, indeed, we are waiting here where you can see the arrival of international guests. As you can hear, the Minister of International Relations, Dr. Naledi Pando, welcoming the Vice President of the Republic of Botswana. When I look at the list earlier on, we saw the arrival of Mr. Raila Omolo Odinga, the former Prime Minister of Kenya. We saw the arrival of um, the former uh, Minister of Uganda, we saw the former President of the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria. We also saw earlier on the arrival of uh, uh, Meg Rasa Machel, who is the former First Lady. But we are now fast approaching that moment where we will see the heads of state and government arriving. And we expect that. Um, we will see even uh, King Muswati of Eswatini as the head of state of that country, King Litsie Labararo as the head of state of Lesotho. We will see the president of Nigeria representing his country, but also as the chair of the ECOWAS. We'll see the arrival of the president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Nagawa, the incoming chair of uh, uh, SADC. We'll see the president of Angola, the outgoing chair of uh, SADC. We will also see other leaders uh, from other countries such as Namibia, uh, Tanzania, who arrived yesterday, as you can hear, now the arrival of the vice president of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. He came yesterday, and uh, you know that Cote d'Ivoire is quite an important country in West Africa. And therefore, you have these regions, the five regions of the continent, well represented here as we were told that uh, of different uh, regions represented by those leaders uh, who are chairing those important uh, regional organizations we also expect uh, the chairperson of the commission of the au the continental body musafaki to be here to represent the continent earlier on we saw wamkele mene the secretariat uh, re he is responsible for the african continental free trade area is based in ghana and therefore you can see that uh, when you look at the continent uh, you have a strong uh, representation from different regions, different institutions. In terms of SADC, uh, many heads of state and government of the region are here. But when you look at other regions, you can look at Cuba. The vice president of Cuba is here. When you look at countries such as the United States of America and perhaps Europe, they will be represented by their uh, diplomats who are accredited to be in South Africa. And uh, when you look at China, China is sending an envoy on behalf of President Xi Jinping. Uh, Russia, you'll have uh, the ambassador of Russia, whom I saw earlier on, uh, who will represent uh, Russia. And I think uh, this is an indication that uh, much as it was a short notice and it was difficult to organize and to arrange because we are told that uh, the president and government was looking at uh, perhaps that the coming to 
weeks for the inauguration, but when the Chief Justice made an announcement of the swearing-in of members of parliament, uh, the organizing committee on behalf of government and the president then had to find a way to ensure that uh, they conduct this or this inauguration does take place, but also they had to make some amendments. You know that uh, the guests were informed on time in terms of roughly where when uh, the inauguration might be, but the final invitations were sent out on Saturday and therefore it was quite a short notice, but that didn't stop many countries to come and witness this important moment where we see a smooth transition uh, in South Africa, particularly when you look at uh, for many years uh, after 1994, the ANC has been uh, the leading party in government, and now you are going to have that inclusive government. Sakina and Ayanda. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Sophie Mokwena. And as we said, we've got you covered wall to wall here at the union buildings, uh, various vantage points, and we'll let you know as things unfold where exactly we are. Ayanda had indicated that the formal uh, part of the program has now started and we are seeing uh, uh, more of the uh, uh, heads of state and government arriving now. So uh, this, of course, will precede the arrival of our former heads of state, yeah. uh, deputy presidents and uh, the pres former presidents of South Africa. Uh, they will all come in before uh, the president-elect arrives. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm reminded of the situation in 2019. I mean, it was completely different to what we have here. We're at Loftus Stadium, and as the different heads of states were coming in, you almost got a sense of how ordinary people were feeling about these, the personhood uh, of these people, right, from the presidents to our own former heads of states. Um, and it was always just an interesting observation at the very least, right? It, it, it certainly is. And, and I saw yesterday uh, during the accreditation process Process. Of course, um, the various um, heads, uh, uh, rather the diplomats that are in South Africa, they were, of course, also getting ready, making sure that people come out. And, and, and that's the difference between having it, for example, at Loftus Stadium mm. and having the inauguration here, where there's a separation between what's happening up here, where we are, and down on the lawns where the 